Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation of OTF Connects, Financial Literacy Resources for Secondary Teachers with Peter Wright. We're thrilled to, of course, have you all with us tonight, and uh, we'd like to kind of find out where in Ontario you are joining us from. So on the map of Ontario here, we're going to ask you to plot your location using our ClipArt tool. At the very left-hand edge of your whiteboard space over there to the west of Thunder Bay, you'll see a tall, narrow tool strip. The very bottom tool is the clip art tool. When you click on that, you're going to get a pop-up window, and we ask you to click on the Common Symbols tab. And there you'll have lots of fun icons. You can scroll to the right and pick one. And once you've selected it, you can just go drop it on the map in approximately the location you're joining us from. And we'll get an idea of where we are tonight. If you're having any trouble finding that tool, let me know. Louise, I'm good. still seeing the OTF Connects pre uh, present screen a uh, slide. Hmm. Is uh, is there a red border around your outside yes. edge of your slide? Okay. Yes. Double check and see if that double red arrow is still red. If it is, click on it. Which? Sorry, the. So up above, in the very uh, upper right corner above the slide? Yes, okay. Okay. Are you all good It was now? red, and now it's white, and now I see the map. Okay, perfect. Nothing worse than having your presenter lost in the slide space. <laughs> okay. All right, so thank you folks for plotting yourselves on the map there. I am going to now hand things over to Ian Pettigrew. Okay, thanks, uh, Louise. Uh, so, uh, welcome, uh, Andrew, uh, Jordan, uh, Sharon, Steph, uh, Theo, and of course uh, Peter and, and Louise, who've uh, been working hard in the in the background here. Uh, as you can see from the the title slide here, I'm the director of curriculum and assessment at uh, at OTF, and I'm really pleased to be able to uh, to join you. And welcome all of you to this financial literacy focused OTF Connects webinar session. We're certainly proud at OTF of the robust program we have in store for this school year, uh, along with all the archived webinars from past years, which you can find uh, on our website under the Learning tab. And uh, this webinar would be one of, one of the examples of the great things that uh, we think we have to offer. These webinars re represent one forum in which uh, we're furnishing you, our members, with learning opportunities that support you in your classrooms to keep doing the great work that you accomplish daily, those little daily miracles. By way of a brief uh, context for this financial literacy focus session with uh, Peter Wright, about uh, whom I'll say a few words in a moment, last year uh, OTF was fortunate to be successful in a tendered bid to secure the resources found on the Investor Education Fund website, www.inspirefinanciallearning.ca. And this website um, will feature prominently in this session since uh, Peter will showcase uh, many of its contents. The development of the original site and its content was made possible by funding from the Ontario Securities Commission. And we've elected, as you'll see, to maintain the look and feel of this website with a few tweaks here and there. Um, but we're, we're pleased to have this rich asset in our possession to be able to share with our members in due course. So over the coming years, we'll be adding uh, and tweaking existing content and adding new resources, including lessons. But before I hand it off to Peter, I'd like to introduce him to you and say a few words uh, about him. Uh, Peter Wright is a married father of two daughters who, in turn, have added five grandchildren to Peter and, uh, and his wife's family. Peter is a retired teacher, and retired here is just code for busier than ever, as you'll see. So he spent 17 years with the Halton District School Board as a teacher, and then subsequently as a department head and finished his career as a department head for 18 years with the Grand Erie District School Board. During his long teaching career, he's taught grades uh, 6 through uh, grade 13, previously what was grade 13 in OAC. Uh, Peter's participated in various phases of the ministry's mathematics curriculum review process, which is, uh, happens about every seven years with uh, all the curriculum areas. And he continues to serve as a provincial mathematics facilitator and was on the Ministry's Collaborative Inquiry uh, Leader Group on teaching mathematics to learning disabled students. 
He's also provided support materials for the Ontario Association of Mathematics uh, Educators, a, a very large provincial subject association. In addition, he currently teaches the online additional basic qualifications course in mathematics for Brock University and works with Nipissing University. So over the years, Peter has also done research in mathematics for McMaster University and, and mathematics education at the State University of New York at Buffalo. And he's developed materials for published textbooks and other resources. I did mention, right, that he was busier than ever. Peter was, uh, was also very active in supporting the Investor Education Fund, uh, which owned um, and produced the materials that we'll investigate uh, tonight and explore, uh, to build awareness about the rich resources it had developed to support financial literacy learning. And now he's seamlessly continues that, continued that work uh, like he's doing tonight for OTF, now that uh, the resources are, are under our roof and we're delighted to have them with us. So on that note, uh, I'll offer my thanks uh, in advance uh, to Louise, uh, our Uber moderator, uh, who's done uh, more of these than, than she can probably even count, and to Peter for enthusiastically agreeing to plan and facilitate tonight's session. Uh, I'm not generally in the habit of quoting insurance uh, companies' taglines, but Allstate Insurance uh, has this one, which I've, I've borrowed and tweaked slightly. So uh, with uh, Peter and Louise, you're in good hands. So thanks again to all of you for participating tonight, and uh, I'm looking forward to joining you in the, in, in the learning. So happy learning, and uh, over to you, Peter. Okay, thanks very much, Ian. I just noticed that we have another person joined us, so welcome. Okay, so let's see if this works now, Louise. Very good. <laughs> okay. We're a small group tonight, so just a couple of comments I'm going to make. First of all, if you have a question, the best time to ask it is when you think of it. And that shouldn't be uh, a problem with a small group that we have. So probably the chat box will be the easiest medium, medium for that. But if you have your mic, uh, by all means, uh, ask me that way as well. And I'm going to start off just by asking uh, you just to identify in the chat box, please, um, your subject area and grades interest as well. Um, so just put down what grade or grades you teach and what subject areas. That will help me focus things a little bit later on. OK, thanks, Steph, for starting us off. OK. Okay. Okay, I'm noticing that the one person there was indicating that they were, okay, is it Esther? Am I pronouncing your name correctly? I apologize if I'm butchering it. <laughs> um, okay, the wizard focused tonight on secondary materials, but uh, what I'm saying translates over very easily, and I'll try and make some comments occasionally. Uh, to add to the slides I'm doing when I see certain things there which I think might be of special interest to you. And I saw somebody else was looking at indicating a broad spectrum there as well. Um, uh, where are we? OK, Jordan as well. You're saying uh, uh, you, you cover grades 4 through 12, so OK. And four subject areas, OK. <laughs> and the really nice thing about these resources is that they are they lend themselves beautifully to cross-curricular okay, uh, work. OK, so moving on then. Now, Louise, what do you want me to do here for slide three from my screen? OK, Peter, you've got your uh, PowerPoint running there in the background? Yes, I do. OK. So I am going to ask you to, uh, there's three big buttons above the left-hand side of the whiteboard. Uh, you've got the one Actually, sorry, control. Louise. Yep. I was ahead of myself. Just uh, Can you play that video clip first? Yes, I can play the video clip. Let me and then I'll and grab that move to the slides afterwards. And so the focus tonight is looking at the what, where, and how of all these excellent resources. And I'm going to start with the why. 
and why do we teach it? And this video clip, if you haven't seen it before, um, I think it will help reinforce things. Okay, hang on a second. Something doesn't quite look right in the clip. Okay, hang on a second, folks. You guys are a patient crew tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, this is the right one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, folks, I'm going to drop a link into our web tour, and you're going to see a YouTube video start right there in the screen. I'm also going to put the link in the chat. If your web tour doesn't work, just click on the link in the chat and give us a green check mark when you're done. I've just popped us back to the screen, folks. Let us know if you're finished. Sorry, Peter, your microphone's not on if you're speaking, just so you know. Oh, thank you. Okay, you're starting to tell me what I should do with my screen, so share it. Yes, okay, so those three big buttons above the left-hand side of the whiteboard, I want you to click the middle one, and it's going to ask you uh, which application you'd like to share, so choose the one that I've you I stopped hearing you. Oh, oh, might be internet connection. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Okay. I'm so not seeing the beginning of the slide. Oh. Okay, so I know the, the uh, okay. application. I think I'm good. Okay, go ahead. I'm seeing it on one of my computers, but not on the other one, which is strange. Can you see it? Yes. Anyway, okay, and I'm seeing some green check marks, which I assume other people can see things. Okay, that's good. So um, we just saw that video clip, and uh, I think the implication on that is fairly straightforward. 
and then of course it does relate to math phobia as well. So just some more questions about the Canadian context. What is the current Canadian household debt level? Does anybody want to uh, suggest uh, an answer in the chat pod? For every dollar earned, what do you think uh, Canadians currently owe? I have seen this report recently. That's pretty close, Steph. Yes, that's we. It is a dollar sixty-four. Oops, I think I left out and that's all pointed in that last one there. Well, no, it isn't there. Okay. Okay. And what do you think the number one item that Ontario teens are saving for? And again, I'm going to ask for some people to respond in the chat pod. And so we're saying a car, car, car. That's a common re response. And would you believe it is clothing? Cell phone is up there as well. And should I continue with this, uh, Louise? Yes, I think that would be best. Is everybody seeing everything okay? Okay. For some reason, I'm not seeing it on my desktop, but I'm seeing it on my laptop, so that's good. Okay. And another fact which you will, I think, find not surprising is that the average Canadian post-secondary student ends up with a debt and I've seen various versions of this figure, but it's usually somewhere between twenty-three and thirty thousand dollars at least. So uh, this is definitely something which our students need to know. Oh, sorry, I am um... okay. Um, this was some information which I gleaned for the U.S. teens but it basically supports what we said just now, 21% on clothing. Food was another major item. Uh, one thing they didn't list here was education. That is in the slide I'll be showing you shortly, though. The current total can uh, Canadian student loan debt, and this figure shocked me when I first saw it, 13, well, almost $14 trillion. Okay, I missed I missed some information there, Louise, uh, which was on slide. Well, we'll go past it now anyway. But I will be giving you a resource where those uh, two questions that I asked you about the uh, uh, average household debt, but also the what Canadian teens are saving on currently. Uh, are in the resources that are available for this webinar, I've given you a link to the page where that data is all recorded there. And uh, it's quite interesting because obviously there's some answers there that we weren't expecting. So what you're interested in is what resources are there available to help you with your teaching? And the answer is there's a wonderful selection of different types of resources, curriculum-based lesson plans and tools. Um, they introduce the uh, financial concepts and issues, and they really promote a, a good understanding of these topics for our students. And the really nice feature is that they are aimed at all grades 4 through 12 and all subject areas. The resources include videos, games, and we'll be playing some of these games later on, I hope, if we have time. Charts and interactive tools here. The one on the left there is a, um, following the sort of commodities since, I think, 1935 to the uh, current day. And on the right-hand side, there is a downloadable spreadsheet for budgeting, which is really useful. Um, there's a timeline which traces the evolution of money from, I think, 6,000 BC to the pro uh, present day. And there is a concept map, which you can see there on the right-hand side. I'll deal with that more on a later slide, which shows the evolution of these ideas from grades 4 through 12 under various different categories. And, of course, the really, really nice, rich resource here is there's some wonderful, highly detailed, complete lesson plans. And I'll be showing you some of those in more detail 
uh, during this evening's presentation. Okay, where do we go? Well, this is the page, and it is indeed at inspirefinanciallearning.ca, which you see at the top there. And it's a really nice teacher, user friendly web page. And we, I suspect all of us know that that's not, not always the case with the resources. And so in the center there, you'll see that there are three categories, three filters that you can use by resource, by grade, and by subject. And I'll be showing you a few examples of that. And if we do have time, I may be asking Louise to uh, take us to that page directly. We'll see how things evolve. But also, <coughs> excuse me, want to draw your attention. <coughs> Excuse me. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that the resources are going to be color-coded. Some of the teachers, some of the parents, and some of the students, and obviously many of them are for all three. But uh, that's a really nice facet as well that they are color-coded in that way. Okay. So for the resources, um, the list there. If you can read that, activities, articles, blogs, calculators, checklists, contrasts. Uh, sorry, contests guides, interactive tools, uh, or lesson plans, quizzes, videos, worksheets, workshops, a whole variety of them there for you. And the grades I mentioned was grades 4 through 12. And the subject areas, I think that covers everything that uh, you are showing me is of interest to you tonight. So there we are. And again, I will be showing you some resources covering a number of those different grades. and. Subject areas, <coughs> but I say my apologies, uh, Esther, because I um, I was focusing tonight on secondary re resources. So the concept map is a, a nice thing to sort of set things in context for us, and you probably can't read those titles down the left hand side there, so I put them at the top there. So <coughs> the five categories are planning for the future, and if we go back you'll notice that that particular category doesn't start until grade 9, which makes a little bit of sense, I think. And then there is the economy, spending, saving, and the money basics. And the money basics, if you can't read the screen right now, for grade 9, it's simply using financial terminology. Grade 10. Um, this time we're using the terminology fluently and some more features there, which I'm sure you can read for yourselves. And <coughs> grade 11. And the grade 12 is just finishing things off for us there. And as I say, this resource is available online and helps set the context. And then I'll show you another document later on. There's a scope and sequence document which is put out by the ministry which supports this as well, which will also give you some help in respect as well. Okay, so if we go to the resources page, and one thing I didn't highlight when I was talking about the features of that page is that in the very top right hand corner there, uh, all those resources are available in French. So I don't know if any of you are. You didn't indicate that you were doing anything in French, but if you have any colleagues that are working in French, um, these resources are all uh, available in French as well. And what I did there was I was looking at the resources available for lesson plans in grade 9 mathematics, and there were three of them. And if I clicked on one, um, you can't really read what's on that slide there, but if you click on that, <coughs> It will take you to this page, which gives you an overview of the subject and the resources available, and it gives you the link for downloading the lesson plan. And if you were to click on the downloading the lesson plan in the right-hand column there, this is on understanding credit and your credit report. And you'll see that this is indicated as being applicable uh, in grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. And it can fit into courses in the business studies curriculum, the mathematics studies, the math curriculum, and also the social sciences and humanities curriculum. And if you download that lesson plan, this one happens to be probably a little bit longer than the average. I think it's about nine pages long. So it starts off, they all start off with a description of the curriculum expectations. 
direct links to what is in our current Ontario curriculum documents. And then you'll see halfway down the page there, there's a section which starts on the minds on component for the lesson plan. And then that continues into the action part of the lesson plan and concludes with the consolidation. But then, of course, there are all the resources that go with that. So all the uh, information, sources of information that students would need for this particular activity. Now, teachers are obviously free to add local information to it as well. But just in case that isn't easily available, sample material. Whoops. I'm not sure. What's happening there, Louise? Anyway, okay. Back to where I was. Okay. And there are worksheets for the students. More information for them to read. More worksheets, and so on. So it really is a nice, complete package. And I've had the occasion to use some of these with students, and <coughs> I find they really, really work well. Okay. Okay, thanks, Louise. I just saw your comment there. And yes, Ian, thank you for reinforcing that. All the lesson plans are designed around the three part lesson framework. Okay. So this time I'm showing you what is available if you were to click on the resource page for the lesson plan and specify grade 10 but leave the subject unspecified. So we have uh, 17 different lesson plans there that are available for grade 10 courses. So it's a really nice comprehensive section there. And I'm just looking to see if there's one there in particular, but I don't see it. Okay. I apologize for this cough. I think I'm going to be only one second. Actually, Louise, are you there? Yes, I am. OK, thank you, Louise. <laughs> You're always there. OK. I apologize. I'm going to have to go and get a glass of water or something. I've got some sort of yes. frog in my, in my throat. While I do that, Louise, could you um, give them the link to go to that resource page, please? And they can play around with it for a few minutes. Absolutely. Yes, Ian, right. <laughs> OK. Not a problem, Peter. You can um, take care of it. <laughs> I'll let you know when I, when I come back. OK, no problem. All right, we'll give Peter a moment to take care of that. And so uh, further up in the chat, I did put a link for the credit lesson plan. And I'm going to get the, the link for the blue one as well. Louise, I hope uh, Peter doesn't have the flu. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> Actually, you know what I'm going to do is, let's see. There we go. Where's the blue one? Oh. You know what, guys? You guys have been fantastic and patient. I'm going to suggest that you go look at the credit lesson plan while I get the flu link, which, uh, of course, of all the links, is actually uh, not in <laughs> his presentation at the moment. <laughs> Poor Peter. But it's such a great website that it's taken me like two seconds to get this blue and new link. So here we go for the grade 10 curriculum. There you go, guys. And this is actually a good opportunity for you to go ahead, click that, open up it up in your browser, and you'll see how exactly it works to get the lesson plan by downloading it. You can see all the different specific features, uh, what grade it relates to, uh, the objectives of the lesson, and uh, it's got some keywords there under topics uh, down a bit, and uh, you're able to provide feedback on the lessons as well. And if you go ahead and download that lesson plan, You'll see how nicely it's put together. Of course, it links to many other resources in each of the lesson plans and um, multimedia resources, too, not all print ones. 
and I see that for that particular one they've got some references to um, some newspaper articles which gives you of course the opportunity to get all kinds of uh, critical thinking and media literacy aspects on the go. Go ahead Ian. Thanks Louise, didn't want to interject, I'm just to, to compliment your, um, your, your comments. Um, as I mentioned in my you know opening remarks, um, it, it's our uh, it's our plan and vision to um, to continue to develop lessons that um, you know that are that are timely and, and respond to revisions in the, in the curriculum because that's uh, obviously an ongoing uh, process and to um, you know to make sure that when when you come back to the to the site uh, every so often that you're you're seeing new uh, new content there. So just to reiterate that. Okay, thanks, Dan. Yeah. And how are you doing there, Peter? I'm doing fine. I'm back and I'm lubricated. <laughs> okay. So, but I'll uh, let people uh, stay on with that link for a couple more minutes so they can play around with it just a couple more minutes, and then I'll continue exploring some of the resources myself. Actually, I'll tell you a secret, Ian, I was actually back for a couple of minutes there, but I forgot to press my, my uh, talk button. <laughs> Peter, if it's any reassurance, um, uh, this week, you know, it's our first week of OTF Connect sessions since uh, the program finished in the springtime, uh, so I've been feeling very rusty as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Louise. Okay, if uh, I'm going to ask people to give me a green check mark when they feel they've seen, they got the feel of that web page, and then I'll continue with the actual webinar. Okay. I think I'm going to go by a majority rule here. Okay, we're there. So. Steph, hopefully uh, you'll find something interesting as well there. So I'll continue. So this this is just one that has always struck me as an interesting one, and also actually um, I think could be incorporated into a, some nice sort of rich learning tasks as well. It's uh, looking at investigating the in, the economic effect of an influenza ep epidemic. Um, so I'll leave that to your imagination, but uh, I think you can, see, you can see the potential there. Okay, and again, I'm not going to go through all the pages of this one, but that was just what you would download if you went to that particular one. So it's a 70 minute, it's intended for a grade 10 science class, but uh, there we are. Okay, so I was giving you a few sort of surveys or overviews of what is available in different grade levels, and this time I've filtered by grade only, so I haven't specified the resource. And so you're seeing that there's a number of those videos are showing up there. Um, I'm looking there also on the right-hand side there. I'm seeing one of the uh, interactive charts that uh, is available there. And you'll see the color coding coming into play there for the parent, teacher, student uh, focus. And in this case, there was quite a richness of resources. So um, there's uh, some more which are still applicable to the grade 11 courses. And I think there's still one more group of them. That's right, that's the end of it. So uh, let's say there's a, when I said it was a rich source, I think you can see what I mean by that. Okay, you may have noticed that uh, three of the resources that were listed there were, actually there's a fourth one on the page as well, were quizzes. And the three, <coughs> some of them are listed right there, and I'm going to ask uh, somebody to suggest one that they find interesting, but unfortunately, one of those I didn't give Louise the link for, but I did give her the link for um, the credit IQ. I gave her the link for the credit debit quiz, and also the matching the country. 
So can I ask somebody in the group there to suggest one of those quizzes? I can grab the third one if anyone wants that one. We're pretty quick. Okay. okay. Surely I'm going to have a bashful bunch here tonight. Somebody. Well, if nobody suggests something, I'm going to. I'll suggest. One. Oh, thank you, Theo. Okay, match the currency. Now, I didn't tell you, Theo, that uh, whoever suggested it was going to play, was going to be answering the questions. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Louise, can you load the match the country one, please? I gave you the link there. I think. Yes, Ian, of course we will. All right, links in the chat there, folks. Go ahead and click on it, and Peter will direct us. Actually, um, can we do it on the screen, or should we each, each, each person do it individually? Uh, we can switch it on the screen, and, and we would be fine to do that, Peter. So I will switch us back out to the whiteboard, and if you just leave your computer as is, and um, you will see your second computer should change. And, uh, and then you can still walk us through it. Here it comes in the web tour, folks. So the web tour space is an interactive space. You can actually click and make your selections for the quiz right here in this uh, web tour space. OK, so I'll click on Start the Quiz. So first question. While dining at a restaurant, you're asked to pay your bill in shekels. What country are you in? Somebody want to tell me if we're in Bulgaria or Israel? Okay, yes. Peter, I'm sorry to yes? interrupt. I just want to let you know that we don't see what you've clicked on. So if everybody wants to click start the quiz, they're probably going to get a different order of questions, correct? Ah, okay. Okay. So everyone could go well, in that case, and I'll, I'll just leave everybody to uh, play with it for a couple of minutes. So if you are still seeing the original screen there, which says currency match quiz, and you scroll down, and you'll see there is a button there which says start the quiz. And I'll give you a couple of minutes to uh, play with that, and then we'll uh, come back to the webinar. Thanks, Louise, for alerting me. And then you may discover that they get harder later on, <laughs> as I've discovered. <laughs> but these are a nice different components to put into a class lesson sometimes. And of course, with smart boards and so on, it's so easy for us to do this with class now. I have no idea, Smith. <laughs> OK. So I think, are we ready to uh, come back to the webinar? I'm seeing uh, Sharon is giving me a green check mark. Thank you. And I'm inferring from Steph. You did right. OK, yes. Let's uh, go back then. OK. Okay, so Peter, you're going to need to click your application sharing button again. Perfect, right okay. back to it. Thank you. Okay. So you might ask what other resources are available, and one other source is Get Smarter About Money, 
And they also have a blog, and you'll see a link on the uh, right-hand side there of the uh, web page. And I've given you this link in the resources uh, material, which Louise will be posting on the website after tonight's webinar. And I've given you a link to this particular um, page as well. And you can see there's some very interesting topics on this page here. They're listed down the left-hand side. And certainly for discussion topics and groups in a uh, senior class, uh, there's some really interesting material there. And the blog has some fairly current material. That I think I guess it's 2014, but I did see some things there from 2015. Um, so, what are your financial resolutions for 2015? Uh, again, there's a lot of interesting discussion material, which is not the usual type of classroom material that we can introduce into these uh, material, these lessons. Uh, this is another game which I will come back to a little bit later. I know I say let's play there now, but I want to get on to another couple of resources first and see how our time goes. So I mentioned that there are some parent resources. Um, so in this case here, I just clicked on the parents link on the left hand side there and came up with a number of them. So you see that by clicking on the <coughs> sorry on the parent link, um, you can adjust what you're getting through the filter there. Some of the some of the resource materials which are designed for parental involvement involve delayed gratification, blind taste tests. Um, there's worksheets there on financial goals that students can go through with their students, and of course. And this applies to some of the uh, younger students. Um, the shopping list can be a very rich resource in this context as well. And there's some really nice sort of how-to resources there for to share with parents. Hi, Peter. I'm sorry to jump in again, but I just realized, as have a couple of the participants, that we are still looking at the screen that has the three quizzes on it. And I'm wondering okay. if your slides are perhaps not moving along. <laughs> well, I guess you're moving well, them along, but they're not reflecting here. OK, I'll go back to that one first of all, and then we'll see where we can get. Thank you. When I look at my laptop, I can see exactly what everybody else can see. I'm trying to remember. We've had this issue before, and I'm trying to remember what it was that resolved it. You may, it may work best if we actually stop your application sharing and then restart it. Or it could be that you pop out of your uh, slide view back to your editing view. And then I noticed that this time when I started the sharing, I wasn't asked. It says hosting is paused on my screen. Oh, OK. Is there a button to unpause it? I'm not seeing that. OK, so let's let's stop your, your hosting. And um, let me see if I can do that for you. Okay, so we're back to the regular slides. And it, does it look like it stopped at your side, Peter? Yes. So should I okay. try again? Yes. Let's just restart it. This is good. Okay, you're going to be asked to, to pick your application again. And thanks for noticing that, in, uh, folks. I'm on my laptop, so I was actually preparing our resource page for tonight and wasn't actually looking at the webinar, so thank you. And I'll get back to where I, where I was. OK, I think we're there. So that's where we were answering the quiz. So I was talking about uh, another complimentary resource, which has some excellent topics for discussion. I'm seeing it on my laptop now, so I think we're, 
I'm hoping everybody else can see it as well. Thanks, Sharon, for letting me know. Okay, that's great. Okay, so you can see some various topics listed on the side there, buying a car, buying a house students might not be interested in, um, getting a new job, getting an education, that's the one I've highlighted now, um, getting divorced, I don't think we want to be sharing probably with our students yet, but uh, life after high school, well, if we're in the senior students, that's, they might be thinking about that, losing a job. Um, Preventing fraud. I don't think anybody is too young to be thinking about preventing fraud and, uh, these days. So, as I said, there's some very interesting discussion topics there which I find senior students really uh, react well to. And I mentioned there's a blog which you can go to as well and uh, various discussion things coming up on that page as well. Okay. That's a game which I may come back to later on, uh, Louise, when we see what time we have. But meanwhile, I have started to talk about the parent resources. And on the next slide, you'll see that um, if you click on the parent resources, and you can then use the filters, uh, and it will only show you the things that are pertinent to parents, and in particular, um, some of the activities are talk about delayed gratification, uh, blind taste test. I actually forget what that one is about now. Uh, and there's a worksheet on financial goals. Sorry, I'm just pausing to read and let other people read as well. That's a good comment that you make. Okay, I missed the comment above as well. I need to make my chat box larger. Okay. Okay, that's nice to know, uh, Louise. Okay, and then uh, Ian is saying how. Uh, <coughs> yes, and you know that's a losing a job is something which there's a number of different aspects of that that people have to adjust to. So, and it can have a very significant effect on the household. Okay, thanks, Ian, for sharing that. That's a good point too, Louise, yes. Um, okay. Okay, so the resources that I've been referencing so far have all been coming from the Inspire Financial Learning web page and a couple of pages that are connected to that. Um, however, there are some additional materials which uh, I should mention, which are provided by the Ministry of Education on their games page, and these nicely complement the resources that are available on the um, Inspire Financial Learning page. And so I just want to spend a few minutes talking about some of those. I'm not sure quite why I keep on jumping back, still, okay. So um, if you go to the games page, which was, oh. my apologies, okay. So if you go to the financial literacy games page from the main page there, which is displayed on the bottom of the page there, or the web page, then you'll see that there are four links down the left-hand side there, background, elementary resources, secondary resources, and related links. And as I say, the focus tonight I thought was going to be on secondary resources, so that's uh, where I'm focusing some of the next few slides. Um, down the right-hand side there, there are three documents available from the ministry. One is the sound investment, which gives you the background to where this all came from and the uh, uh, sort of there was a, a committee set up to investigate essentially financial understanding in Canada or in Ontario, and uh, this whole project came out of that. And then there are two documents there. The middle one is the scope and sequence expectations for grades four through eight, I'm going to guess. Um, and the second one is the one that I'm showing you there, which is the 
uh, scope and sequence of expectations for grades 9 through 12. So if you want to see sort of where this fits in and so on, those are good background documents to have. The actual resources on the page there, if you go to the secondary resources, then you'll see, again, all the subjects are listed there. Uh, <laughs> this, I think, is actually a, a different set of subject areas than the ones that were available on the um, Inspire Financial Learning page. But I also want to draw your attention to a couple of the links there, which you see in blue. Um, well, the first one, anyway, he highlights videos, because these are, I think, a really worthwhile resource, not only for financial literacy, but um, in a broader context as well. Um, and if you pursue those links further, and in this case I looked on the mathematics, <coughs> I was looking at the financial literacy in action there, and as you can see, you can expand some of these uh, links. And I expanded the two at the top. And when I went to the, whoops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay, that's what we want. And you'll see here that there's a lot of support materials which are available, including in the bottom half there, you'll see that there are some video clips explicitly on the different components of the lesson plans which are available from the uh, Inspire Financial Learning pages there. So this is looking at the lesson on gross profit calculation, which was recommended for the MEL3 e-course. And there are several video clips. You don't have to look through the whole sort of 45 or 50 or 60 minute uh, video clip, <coughs> but you can just focus on the minds on component or the action component or the consolidation application. And Louise, I'm going to ask you please, if you could please share with us the video of the consolidation application from that one. Okay, let me just grab that one. And while you're doing that, uh, Louise, I'll mention that uh, something which uh, I found very interesting was that there are also uh, videos, if anybody in the group is interested in special ed, there are video clips of the financial literacy being taught both at the EC Drury School for the Hearing Impaired and the W. Ross McDonald School for the Sight Impaired in Brantford. And I found those particular videos very, very interesting as well. Okay, so it's the Consolidation Application of Learning in the School Store? Yes, please, Louise. Okay. What, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to put that link into the chat, and I'm going to ask you to click on it, and once you've clicked on it, you're going to be on that Financial Literacy and Action Mathematics page. You're going to click the plus sign next to Grade 11 Mathematics. And once you click that plus sign, you're going to see the list of uh, resources that Peter's got on the screen there and the fourth MP4 file. Go ahead and click on the MP4 link that's on the right-hand side next to Consolidation, Application of Learning in the School Store. That MP4 uh, file is not actually a direct link. Okay. And I've chosen that fourth one there because that's only about three minutes, so... Uh That should be good for us tonight. And also, I know some teachers, I think myself sometimes, I've sort of pondered over what would be a good consolidation, you know, wrap up for a particular lesson. So it's always nice to see what other people are doing.
Thanks, Luis. <laughs>
So uh, if, if you can still see what your other laptop is showing, then uh, I would stick with what your laptop is showing and then direct us from there. Okay. Your laptop you can switch completely over to if you like because it also has the slide controls. Right. Okay. So if somebody, if somebody wants to watch me play it on the screen, can they give me a topic as to which one they find interesting? Family financial face-off, gift thrift, or ready, set, retire? Gift thrift. Okay, thanks, Steph. Okay, first one off the bar. So let me click on that. I have a feeling this might be one that also, when you click, um, it's only going to change your view. Uh, so everybody could play the game themselves, or we could click when you click and okay. see what happens. I think you're probably right, uh, Louise. So is anybody seeing my screen? How would they know? But my desktop is definitely doing weird things. <laughs> poor, poor desktop. It's time for bed for the desktop, I think. If you folks have managed to click on one of the games and selected it and moved ahead with it, uh, then maybe you'll be able to share some of the things that surprise you when you come back. Is anybody noticing the feature of the game which the students really latch on to? Can you hear my uh, sound, Louise, since I'm talking to the desktop? Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, clear? Hear you loud and clear. It's good. Does Theo have something to add to? Okay. One of the graphics changes size on the screen as you're playing. Okay, I think I'm going to probably start to wrap things up then. Um, did, anybody, did anybody notice the uh, feature which I was trying to reference there? If you look at the, uh, the brain on the right-hand side there, as you answer correct questions, the brain gets bigger. And uh, if you answer incorrectly, the brain gets smaller. <laughs> and for some reason, the students really seem to like that. I think the sad thing is, Jordan, that mine did as well. <laughs> Perhaps a nice way of putting it, Louise, yes. OK. OK, so we have about. 10 minutes left. And as I said, if anybody has a special resource they would like me to focus on, we can do that. Otherwise, I can start to wrap things up. Um, and I'll be pleased to answer any questions. You haven't had too many questions from me yet.
me and you've got your hand up. Go ahead. I do. Thanks, uh, Louise and Peter. I just uh, wanted to mention that um, there's uh, some of the videos that um, the you know real uh, real people, including uh, students, uh, teachers, and others. Um, when you click on those in the in the lessons and the, all the resources that are on inspirefinanciallearning.ca or or the French uh, side, as the case may be, that will redirect you to um, get smarter about money. And that's actually still tied to the Investment Education Fund and the Ontario Securities Commission. And the reason for that is that the permission forms that were originally signed by anyone who's featured in that in those videos, those are actually tied to Investor Education Fund and the Ontario Securities Commission. And so if we wanted to house those on, on our server um, and, and have those um, connected you know, directly uh, to us, we, we'd be required because of um, uh, privacy laws to contact all of the people who are originally um, uh, signed permission forms and, uh, and, and ask them to re-sign re those. Um, in other words, the permission forms are not transferable from Investor Education Fund and um, the Ontario Securities Commission. So that, so that it seems like a, a little confusing about why am I being redirected to a Another site, if if OTF you know owns or is you know, coordinating those uh, those resources, and that's why. Just in case you know um, any of you are having a conversation you, you, that you visit there yourself, or having a conversation with some of your other colleagues and wondering why that happens. So just a point of clarity. Thanks for clarifying that, Ian. And uh, just to reinforce, some of those videos really are excellent. There's one which is really nice of a grade six student. Um, interviewing Caroline Cheesecake, I think her name is, uh, who's a money guru in Ontario. And there's another one which is um, definitely more suitable for senior classes, where the husband and the son are having a conversation. Uh, husband and son. Father and son are having a conversation. Um, the father thinks that the conversation is about um, decision making in uh, financial matters. But the son thinks he's having a conversation about a totally different topic. I'm going to leave you to either guess or find out for yourselves what topic the son thinks the father is, is trying to talk to him about. <laughs> but it's quite humorous, and uh, but it's definitely one that which is more for senior classes. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but they, they, they are good though. As I said, one of the things that I really like about this collection of resources is the breadth of different resources that are available. So students these days, they expect a lot from us. And they want things that will address multiple learning styles. And these resources clearly do address that. OK. Um, in that case, then, uh, Louise, if you can put us on to the last page, then it's, I'll be wrapping things up, I think, if nobody has any questions for me. So I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, there is a set of resources which um, Louise will be posting on the web page, uh, which uh, there's always resources that complement all of these. and. Uh, I've given my contact information in there, and Ian's contact information is there as well. Um, and if you want some uh, material which is more focused on the elementary grades, I know, uh, I think Esther, you were more focused on the uh, younger students, and there was somebody else who had a broad spectrum there as well. Um, you will find that there, were, there was, well, actually, that there were two webinars last year, I think one of them is still archived on the, on the site, which were aimed at elementary resources. There's some really neat interactive uh, lessons there for elementary students. One is on uh, creating duct tape wallets. And there's a math lesson for that, and there's a visual arts lesson for that particular one. Um, both are excellent. 
Um, and there's also a really nice, uh, I, think, I think that one is aimed at grade four, but um, I think that a little bit, I think some of these lesson plans that are aimed for the lower grades uh, with, with care could be used with grades even below grade four. And there's another one which is really, really interesting for grade six students, um, which is on tower building on a budget. And somebody, when I was doing a presentation one time, someone mentioned to me that they could also, you could utilize that in the classroom, uh, because groups would be working on it, and you could assign different roles within the group. One person in the group could be the banker, um, and so you could basically expand on that. And one comment that I have heard is that uh, don't take the timing recommendations too literally, because sometimes a lesson is indicated as being a 40-minute lesson, but with creativity, uh, it can often be expanded into a, a richer task that could be longer or even take two or three days. So uh, basically, the limit is your own creativity with some of these materials. So thank you all, every, everyone. I've enjoyed sharing them with you. Um, I feel this is an area of the curriculum that has been too long neglected, and I'm really pleased to see such excellent resources available to us now. Can I jump in here? Yes, sorry, please, I, missed that. I, I just oh sorry, just wanted to uh, to again to to uh, thank. Uh, it started out by uh, by thanking uh, Louise and, and Peter in advance for uh, for all their work to get this ready. But I, I also and, and so I, I echo those thanks again uh, at the conclusion here. But I also wanted to thank all our our colleagues that are um, uh, active and, and busy in uh, in the classroom uh, working on those uh, those tiny and big uh, miracles every day. Um, OTF Connects is done you know, by and, and for teachers, but it's also done with teachers. And you know, this would be a little bit like the, the, the SETI project, so the search for um, extra, extraterrestrial and intelligent life. If, if there were no, uh, no one on uh, with us for the OTF Connects uh, webinar, so no participants, um, it, it makes a pretty dull, uh, dull webinar. So uh, uh, thanks uh, for adding this as uh, part 16 to, uh, to your day. And, uh, Best wishes for for part 17, which is the uh, which will hopefully involve uh, some sleep as well. So thanks thanks to all of you, and again thanks to Louise and Peter for for all your work to get this uh, ready for us. Lots of good learning here. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, I'm going to direct your attention to the slide there, folks, and I'm also dropping a link in the chat. Uh, the link in the chat is the resource page for tonight. It doesn't have everything on it yet, but it will shortly, including the link to the recording from tonight's session. So if you want to share it with colleagues, you can certainly do so, and that will show up in the past webinars area of the uh, OTF website under OTF Connects. But we're going to send you a follow-up email. It's going to have those direct links, and you can share it freely as much as you would like. Now, the center of the screen has a big orange Google link there, and that is your feedback survey for tonight, and we definitely encourage you to, to click on that. I'm going to put that link in the chat as well, and, uh, and fill out that survey. It'll only take you a couple of minutes, and at the end of that survey, once you click Submit, you'll be provided with a thank you message that includes a link to um, our brand new feature, which is our certificate, I guess producer, and, uh, and you'll be able to enter your name, and it will create a PDF uh, certificate for tonight's session to show your participation, and uh, you can print it or save it and, uh, and tell your colleagues so that they'll come back for more with you the next time. Um, I'm also going to point out to you that that bottom orange link is also live, and that is our link of upcoming sessions on the calendar. So certainly uh, check out what else is available there and, uh, and keep an eye out for some time, maybe by mid-December, we should have the uh, uh, January to June calendar posted as well. There's the link of what's coming up. So thank you all for your participation tonight, and uh, uh, we hope to see you again. Any last words, Peter and Ian? Not for me. Yeah, I don't think so, except to thank you, Louise, for holding everything together tonight. <laughs> 
Well, I do apologize. It was a it was a little a little uh, challenging for you, and I and I feel for you because uh, that's never fun when you're trying to do your best to support teachers and the technology is kind of providing some hiccups in the way. So thank you for doing a wonderful job and uh, getting us through and over those bumps and uh, sharing those fantastic resources. So thank you so much, and thank you everyone for your patience as well. So, have a good evening, everyone.